Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all our sins, all the way back to Adam. I remit our sins and wash them in the blood of Jesus. I remit the sins of the patriots and our leadership that you are using in this country to bring it back to the cross. So Christians, brothers and sisters, the church's time to fish is really short. And I'm going to tell you why. You see these boys right here, these light bulb head looking losers. The guys we trust, our patriots, are listening to these boys. And if they ain't listening to these boys right here because of how stupid they look, look who the devil sends to them to listen to. They will listen to these boys right here because these boys right here, they look like the heroes. And they're all fallen angels. They can shape shift and they can look any way that, that, that you want them to look. They can look like saints. They can shape shift into women, uh, anything. And we know that all the angels are male. There are no female angels. So these are definitely fallen angels and these are to get to men. So that's why I say these boys right here. I mean, just take a look and look how they dress. They're dressed like the heroes from the space movies that we've been brainwashed by for years. They even have a Jesus figure. They got a false Jesus that's going to come. A cosmic Christ. He's not a biblical Christ. And it, this is in their arsenal as well. Satan knows that the good guys will, will listen to people that look like this or beings that look like this. You know, because we've been brainwashed by all these movies, Star Trek and Star Wars and all that stuff like that. So that's pretty easy. So apparently these beings have been helping the good guys. They've been helping the patriot, patriots fight beings that look like the, the little light bulb head dudes, the losers, these these weirdos right here. They can make these in underground bases in the domes. Not a problem. All the thing they're doing is they're blending animal and human DNA together to make these hybrids. This is the same thing that the fallen angels taught mankind when they came down during Genesis 6. If you read about you read the book of Enoch, the book of Enoch goes into more detail of what happened in Genesis 6. So when the fallen angels came down, they taught man weaponology. They taught man how to blend animal and human DNA. And when the Greeks saw this stuff, the half man, the half horse and all that stuff like that, that's when they came with their Greek mythology because that was their best way of explaining what they saw back then. So it's called mythology, but it was some truth. It was just their way of explaining it. So you see this right here? Got the little spaceships and stuff like that. Jesus Christ team and God, the angels, God's angels don't need craft to fly around in. You understand? Fallen angels, they need this because they're fallen. They've, they've been stripped of something and they taught man how to make these also. These also are being made in the underground bases. They came here and they taught man all this high technology and stuff like that. You know, they exchange technology for the rights to kidnap human beings so they can make their little hybrids. And they can bring out all their little hybrid creations that they made down in the domes, all these hybrids, the grays and all that. The grays are pretty much a biological suit that a demon can interface with and interact in this world because demons, they're pretty limited because they don't have a body. But with the gray aliens that they make in the labs and stuff like this, now they have something physical where they can interact in, in our world and cause havoc, fly craft, and do, you know, things like that. But yeah, they're doing all this stuff underground. And it's been going underground for thousands of years. And so the devil is smart. He knows that uh, the good guys are starting to win and stuff like that. So what he does, he sends his control opposition group in to help eliminate some of the, the bad guys that, that we're more used to viewing as bad guys to help eliminate some of them. And then we'll gain our trust. We're like, yeah, these guys are helping us out. These are our buddies. I mean, look how they look. You know what I mean? Just look at them. I mean, come on. So that's easy to win over man because man is always going by 
appearance. So, and that's why the devil was able to present himself as an angel of light and things like this. And then this false image of Christ is uh, based off of uh, uh, Caesar Bagaris. And you see Sonata here and things like this. This is how they're going to come. And the real Jesus, he doesn't come to earth as a, as a flesh man bringing world peace. The way the real Jesus Christ returns, he returns as God. And the first thing he's doing, uh, he's burning up the tares. He burns up the tares first, and then he gathers his wheat into the barn. So anybody coming down talking about they Jesus Christ and talking about world peace and, and going against the Bible and all that stuff like that, they are of the spirit of the Antichrist. And they're not on God's team at all. I mean, you look, they're going to be coming down, presenting themselves, uh, just looking really nice, especially the Antichrist. He's just, he's just going to come down looking really appealing to people. And they're going to believe him just because of how good he looks. And they don't know that the devil can't make himself look that way. And they were like, oh, this guy is great. Look how he speaks. Look how his voice fluctuation sound. They're just going to fall for all that. And then on top of that, they have this thing called Project Bluebeam. Project Bluebeam technology where they can, uh, with lasers, they can put up any images they want in the skies. You know what I'm saying? To make people think that Jesus is coming or something like that or anything that they wanted to do. Project Bluebeam, I mean, just take a look. They can put all types of holograms that they want of anything. So you have that Project Blue Beam to deal with. And you have the beams, the beings coming down that's pretending to be from other planets and all this stuff like this. Other solar systems. And they're here to help us stop nuclear war and all this stuff. When they're the ones that gave us this technology, the fallen angels. You check out the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch really goes down we really, really lays it out bare what the fallen angels did. It names them like Azazel and the different names of the fallen angels. And it tells you, they, the book of Enoch tells you exactly what these particular angels did. And fallen angels come down, they can look just like regular people. And you know, the Nazis were big into the occult like this, big into the occult, and they channeled and they, they channeled those beings. Uh, and got information and how to build their little craft and stuff like this. And that's why they had, everyone had such a hard time with the Nazis at first because they was quite a number of years advanced ahead of everyone else in technology. And that's because the fallen angels have been giving them technology and favoring them, you know, trying to help them make a master race, you know, probably blend it with uh, Nephilim and things like that. So yeah, I'm just showing you how this these control oppositions uh, will present themselves. Okay, this one don't want to open up for some reason, so we're going to open it up another way. Computer's kind of slow here. Yeah, just just take a look. You know, this is how, this is how they're going to come, and they're going to say, Oh, we're here to help you enter a new golden age, the age of Aquarius and all this stuff like this. And they're going to have their little, new, their little new things. Oh, we discovered some new tablets in the cave and this is the real commandments from God and the Bible is false and all this stuff like that. That's how they're going to present it. And people that's these people that's waiting to hear about another savior other than Jesus Christ, they're the main ones that's going to get fooled by it. And they've been preparing us for a long time through all these movies, Avatar and all this stuff. They're telling you what, what, they, what they're planning to do, you know, bringing out these aliens. And they're going to say, we got all these alien species and races from other planets and stuff like this. And when the Christians come out and say, hey, you know what? That's all a deception. It's all demonic. You're making these, these, these hybrids down in the uh, domes, the deep underground military bases. They're going to they're gonna probably come up with a new term for the Christians and say, oh, you guys are, you guys are space racists and all this stuff like this. They want to call everything racist. So look, that, I mean, this is just like crimes against nature. These things that they're making down there in the domes, deep underground military bases, half animal, half human hybrids. And they're going to bring them out and say, these boys, these boys right here are from outer space and they're from other planets and all that stuff like this. Yes, 
And just just look at look at this. Project Blue Beam. That's Project Blue Beam in action right there. Right there in the gym. You got the well jumping out of the water, so that lets you know how advanced their technology is. By the time they release technology to the public, it's probably already like 50 years old. Because they're just keeping you in the dark on everything. On everything you could think of, they're keeping you way behind, way behind. And this is the disclosure. They're going to bring out all this stuff. That's why they've been keeping it secret for so long. Because they're try just trying to figure out how they can introduce it to the public. I mean, look at this boy right here. This boy right here, he's on Satan's side, but that's that's how they're gonna be. They're gonna be looking something, looking like something nice that you're familiar with as being good guys. And then they're gonna have other other guys looking like the bad guys. And it's all psychology. Looking like the bad guys, and you and you're gonna you're gonna go away from these these guys and run to these guys for help, but they're all on the same team. That's what you need to understand. They're all on the same team. They're not on God's side. And if you don't believe that, the Bible tells you you're supposed to test the spirits anyway. You're supposed to test the spirits to see are they from God or are they not. Now, people have filmed video and stuff like this, like a city in the sky. This ain't nothing but Project Blue Beam. And they, they usually need cloud cover to make whatever they want to make with the lasers. And that's all that is. And then they have something called voice to skull technology where they can broadcast the sound and then it just shows up in your head somehow and it makes you think God's talking to you and they already done tried this this uh, technology out and technique in the Middle East against uh, 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 Islamic soldiers or whatever things like that to make them think that their God was talking to them and things like that right there so uh, he was like one of the first fallen angels that showed up. His name is Valiant Thor. He came down sometime back in the whatever, the 50s, whatever, something like that. And this boy right here, you could tell he's a fallen angel because if he wasn't, he's been in the Pentagon for decades. Decades, you hear me? And he has said anything to stop uh, human trafficking, especially the human trafficking that's been going on under D.C., that our soldiers are going down there fighting and retrieving children and stuff like this. This boy right here been there the whole time and he hasn't spoke up or or did anything to stop it or try to use his influence to stop it. But they, but they're here though to you know help mankind and all things like this. So this is one video where a, a patriot was saying over there in the Ridgecrest system of uh, California down there in the dumps that this one fallen angel group called Ashtar Command actually uh, turned against the Patriots and blocked off or did whatever and then restarted the human trafficking down there. So that should let the Patriots know right there that these groups are fooling you. I don't care what their name that they come with. They're going to come with names that you, you're used to thinking are good guys like oh, Galactic Federation of Life or Ashtar Command. I mean, they could come down and say, well, we're, we're the lost Star Trek battalion, you know, and you're going to fall for it because... That's what you've been brainwashed to believe is the good guys in the movie. But let me tell you like this. Guys, angels, they don't be showing up trying to make deals with you. They're usually bringing a message from God, and they're just, they, they're not doing anything to try to impress you. But the fallen angels, they're always trying to impress you. They're always trying to seduce you, this and that, make deals and stuff like this. God's angels will come down and say, hey, this is how it is, period. You know, God makes a decree, and that's how the, the, the real angels roll. And fallen angels and stuff like that, they will not, well, according to Scripture, they will not confess that Jesus Christ came in, in the blood or came in the flesh. Um, they, they're, they're not supposed to confess that. So let's, uh, let's have a look at some Scripture here to back that up. Okay, looking at 1 John 4, 1 through 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is a spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already it is in the world ye are of God little children and have overcome them 
because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So what the Patriots need to do, what you need to do, Patriots, these beings that you think are good guys, question them with that. Question them with that and plead the blood of Jesus on them. Plead the blood of Jesus on them. I had a sister back back in my hometown who said an angel showed up and she thought it was an angel from God. And some kind of way with his bright, radiant, beautiful form that the room bent that where she was at, the room bent. That's how powerful it was. And then she said uh, something just came into her mind, said, uh, plead the blood of Jesus or something like that. And she said the blood of Jesus over it, like just to test it. And she said the blood of Jesus like that. And then she said that angel began to melt. So that was a fallen angel right there. So there you go. That's, that's an example right there. You got to test the spirits, plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them. If you want to beat fallen angels and stuff like that, you got to use Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You quote it. You quoted Adam. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the hour that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noon day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high of thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, that's not on the screen that you're looking at. That's just something that I had memorized, like back in 90, uh, 98 or 2000 or something like that. So I would suggest that you memorize Psalm 91 because there have been stories of people that have been put up in front of firing squad and they're saying Psalm 91 or they're saying Psalm 23 or whatever like that. And the bullets not even touch them. There was this platoon. I heard a story of this platoon that went to the Vietnam War. And every day before they went out into the combat, they said Psalm 91 over themselves. They, and everyone that did that, not one of them came back with a scratch throughout the whole war. They all survived. So that's the power of Psalm 91 right there. So Christians, you got to get on your game. Get out there, start fishing, getting them souls because a lot of people going to be falling for it when they these good looking beings come down and acting like they helping us and then try to point out, try to act like we're haters and stuff for pointing out what they really are and who they really are and things like that. Um, I got a little verse that I think is talking about that when these guys are in effect and when they, they work together to point to the Antichrist as God, they're going to say he's the guy and he's God and stuff like this. And so that is how I can see that scenario happening where there's a Antichrist and there's a mark of the beast because if the Patriots are winning and we're getting rid of the bad guys and we're putting them in Gitmo and we're doing all of this, how do we end up with the mark of the beast coming? I'll tell you how. These fallen angels, they're, they're presenting themselves as the good guys and so the Patriots are listening to them, taking their advice, taking their lead and so that's how we come to that situation. Now here's a verse that I like to say about that. Uh, John 16 two through three it says they shall put you out of the synagogues yeah the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me there you go right there that's a that's a that's there you go that's the type of world that they're gonna establish because they're gonna bring out all these technologies and, and, and acting like they're the ones that came up with it. Uh, things that cure uh, med beds and all these things like this. It's been uh, human beings 
throughout the years that have been making inventions to cure everything. Uh, cars that are run on water, cars that are want run on electricity, all those type of inventions like that. And what happens? The bad guys, the cabal will come, either threaten a person or buy, or buy their invention off of them and then shelve it or keep it for themselves. And what they're going to do, they're going to bring all this stuff out, all this hidden technology, all this lost high technology, and they're going to give the credit to the fallen angels and the Antichrist. Like, yes, these guys, they're making things better for us. We're going to have a better world. We're going into a golden age. And these Christians, oh, they just want to stay stuck in time and all this stuff. They, they, that's how they're going to try to spin it. I'm telling you right now. So got to get ready. Got to be prayed up. Got to be ready to use the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power, there's power in, in, in Jesus' blood. Learn them scriptures. And here's a, here's, a, here's a good prayer that you can use too. Now, I was told that this prayer works against even hardcore demons that can withstand rebukes. It's called, I, I like to call it the love prayer. It's, it's the loose the fruit of the spirit prayer. Where you can say it on yourself and you can say it on your enemies. And it hurts the demons, but it don't hurt people. It bless the people, but it fries the demons. So here's how it go. I loose the fruit of the spirit on you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control, mind of Christ. And I bind it around your neck, and I bind it around my neck, and I speak peace into our minds by the grace of God, by faith in Jesus' name, it is done. I loose the fruit of the Spirit on you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control, mind of Christ, and I bind around your neck and my neck, and I speak peace into your mind by the grace of God, by faith in Jesus' name, it is done. And I say this to whoever's listening to this video. I loose the fruit of the Spirit on you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, goodness, faith, self-control, mind of Christ, and I bind around your neck and my neck, and I speak peace into our minds by the grace of God, by faith in Jesus' name, it is done. Got another scripture for you. That will will cover the topic that we're speaking on, uh, Second Thessalonians, and it's talking about the strong delusion, which we are about to walk into with this with this disclosure that the the patriots, the good the good guys are going to spring on us. It says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivable deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So whoever is not accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are going to be falling for the strong delusion which is already at the door. They're already ready to come in because when these beings come in and they're doing all these miraculous things, you're going to believe them. You're going to believe they're on God's side. You're going to believe that the Antichrist is God because they're going to be using technology on you. They're going to use Voss's Skull on you. They're going to use freaking uh, Project Blue Beam and, and Mad Bears, all this stuff. The Mad Bears, from what Pastor Stan was saying is the Lord told him, don't ever get in a med bed because it's going to change your DNA. It's going to change your DNA to Lucifer DNA. And I already made a video about that. So you've been warned on all these things. What you need to do, stick with the Bible. King James Version of the Bible. Test the spirits. And I love uh, uh, DJT. You know who he is. Oh, boy, I love him. I love him, love him, love him. But the problem is, I believe he's partially deceived also because he's, because I hear that he signed the Noahide laws more than once, and the Noahide laws are not of God. And believe me, the Noahide laws means killing Christians. That's what the Noahide laws come down to. So the Noahide laws are not a good thing in any way, shape, or form. Now let's talk about let's let's expose another thing about these beings and where they come from. So first of all. Let's let's deal with this. Let's deal with this nonsense right here. So this right here, this is the sun, right? The sun is going around the solar system at 500,000 miles an hour. And we are one of these planets that's following the sun as it races around the universe. So we're going around the, the sun at 66,000 miles an hour. 66, get it? 
and then we're on our axis spinning at a thousand miles an hour and then if and then if you look at it some other kind of map they have is like 23.6 or something like this well it's a whole lot of sixes so all right so the bible says the heaven where god is the third heaven is above the earth all right god's throne sits above the earth on the firmament right below the firmament is heavens two that's the solid firmament where the sun moon and stars are below that is the open sky where the birds fly and where the planes fly the planes can and the rockets cannot get into the solid firmament where the sun moon and stars are and those sun moon and stars and all that stuff was placed in the firmament so it's an exact location that's located in between two bodies of water a body of water down here in the earth and there's a a ocean above the firmament and then you got the throne of God up here so you mean to tell me if this is the earth heaven is just following it following it around as it does all this stupid stuff following the sun around the universe so the heaven is just following it around as it goes to I don't think so I think it's more this way the way the Bible describes it you got the heaven right here Heaven number three, you got heaven two right here, the closed firmament where the sun, moon, and stars are. And the book of Enoch says a lot of these stars are living beings. And then you got the open firmament. This is where the birds fly. And then you got the land and you have the ocean. And the way the Bible describes it, the, the ocean and the land are not one thing. They're two different things. You have the land and the ocean. They're two different things. All right, so... Right here in the firmament, okay, some of these stars and things like this may just be frequencies. And the reason I say that, because science have did something called solo luminescence, where they've made a star inside of a jar using a frequency. Let's see, I had that picture. Let me see if I can't find that picture for you guys of the star in the jar using the solo luminescence. It's something that you can look up if I can't find the picture. I'm just trying to find it real quick. Solo luminescence. Anyway, you could go on YouTube. It's called the star in the jar, solo luminescence, and the scientists are using some type of machine that's sending a, a frequency into a jar of liquid and it's making a star that, that twinkles just like the stars in the night sky. And it's in liquid. And it's, and it's a star. It's a star. Well, that's solo luminescence. So, yeah. So, another thing, too. So, here's another reason why this model is false. Let me go back in that folder there. Uh, folder at. Let me just go back in this folder. Here's another reason this doesn't make sense. So, all these stars out here, according to this heliocentric model, which is only 500 years old, started by Copernicus, and the early church in that time rejected him and called him a heretic for coming up with this nonsense. Well, these stars, they in the heliocentric model, they say these are these are suns. These are giant suns. So, according to them, the sun is bigger than the Earth. So, if the stars fall from the heaven to the earth like untimely figs, one star would totally destroy the earth. If the star is a sun, if a star is a sun, all it takes is one star to completely destroy the earth because a star is bigger than the earth, according to heliocentrism, because they're all suns. So it don't make no sense. So Christians, you need to stop trying to bend, bend the Bible to fix the brainwashing that they taught you in school. They taught you a bunch of nonsense and brainwashing, just like evolution with this fake cosmology. These, these stars are smaller than the earth. And when God breaks the firmament, when he breaks this hardened firmament, all this stuff is going to fall to the earth like untimely figs. They're stars. They're not giant suns. And there's, there's another verse talking about how hard the sky is. Say so the sky is a hardened 
it's a hardened structure. It's not a vapor. Like they try to say at the uh, the Creation Institute, they try to say, oh, the firmament went away with the flood and all this, all this stuff like this. The firmament is still is still there because in Psalms, I think it's Psalm 19, it says the heavens, it says the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the firmament show of his handiwork. I think that's Psalm 19. I had all this stuff. I don't even know where I put it at, but I had it all right in there. And there's another one that says uh, he's uh, chastising Job and he says, has thou with him spread out the sky? Which is strong, which is strong as a molten looking glass. So that's letting you know that the the sky is hardened. There's a hardened firmament up there, and they can't breach it with their rockets. So every time that they go with the rockets, they go up and they curve away from it, and then they say, "Oh, they're doing that because the Earth is spinning and all that nonsense." And then they wait till they go down range, out of line of sight, and then the rockets fall right into the water. So that's what they're doing with that. Is this another deception? And why would they tell the truth when they're getting billions of free tax dollars every year, free and clear? NASA. And NASA, what was NASA made by? Operation Paperclip, former Nazis. So they can't be trusted at all. So it just needs to be disbanded, completely disbanded. They need to get rid of NASA. And I got another video showing on Google Earth how a random person has went on Google Earth and found their hoax site for Mars. And it had, all, it had all the same stuff that they say is Mars, the exact same rocks at this site. And then they had their little NASA vehicles on site. So it's all a big deception. It's all based on money. It's all based on trying to uh, short circuit the Bible and make the Bible look like it's not correct. Or the Bible's correct in every way. And not one thing has been disproven in the Bible ever. The Bible has never been disproven. And the Bible predicts all of this with the strong delusion.